here today. Lord, we just pray that those words spoken this morning will bring encouragement, will bring deliverance, and encouragement to us today. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been an interesting week, um, or a few weeks. Cindy said that we've had people just show up at the door while we're here. So does that mean we need to be here more? Hmm, I don't know. But we are moving into a time where people are seeking out God. People are coming up against things that they cannot handle on their own. And they know that there's got to be something bigger than what they are trying to take care of in their own little self. Something out there that is bigger than them, that they can turn to and move into what God has for them. So this morning we're going to... Um, If I can find my place. We're going to start in Samuel this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered together armies to battle. And they were gathered together with Soko, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Soko and Azekiah and Ephes Damim. And Saul and his men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span and he had an, a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass on his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and he cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye servants of, to Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. <laughs> hmm. What does that have to do with us today? What is, is calling out to us today? What is our enemy today? It can be many things. It can be, doesn't have to necessarily be the Philistines. It can be lack. It can be sickness. It can be Um, low self-esteem. It can be many things that the enemy will use to keep you contained, to keep you hiding, to keep you on your own side and not gaining the ground that God has given you. 
we have today many things that are holding us back from what God has for us. Whether it's politically correct people or the miserable thing of lack in our lives. But it's calling us and saying, what's the matter with you guys? Why don't you just come on, just choose one of you guys and come down here and let him fight with me. And boy, if he can beat me, <laughs> we will be your servants. Or if I kill him, You are stuck with us for your entire life, and you will serve us forever. We have the ability to defeat the enemy. We have the ability and the resources to speak to those things that are hollering in our ears that are ringing across the valley. You don't have a chance. So you might as well give up now. Are we going to stand in a corner hiding from what the enemy is taunting us with? Are we going to be inside these four walls? We feel safe. We have comfort. We have semi-safety in these four walls. But these four walls are just our resting place, our recharging. Because when we go outside these walls, there's many things that are going to require your attention, whether it be lack or a lack of healing or somebody trying to bully you. And the enemy will, I'm telling you, he will try and intimidate you into keeping you in your own four walls right here. Well, we're safe here. We don't have, if, as long as we can just get by, we don't really need anything else, do we? We're just, we're, we're here, we're happy, we're just doing our own thing. No. There is so much more that God has for us that we need to stand up and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. We need to stand up and proclaim that there is a better way than hiding in the four walls of this church. There's a better way. The enemy is big. The enemy is tall. The enemy is a giant in our eyes. But we need to Look <laughs> through the eyes of Jesus. When we put on the whole armor that God has given us, we have the ability to face those enemies and to kill them and to proclaim victory that God has for us, planned. It's planned. He has a plan for our lives, and it is good, and it is not evil. That's the truth. It's the word. Well, in verse 11, we're back to Saul when he and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly 
afraid. Wow. Now David, the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul in the battle. And the names of his three sons that went into battle were Il Eliab, the firstborn. The next unto him was Abinadab, and the third was Shammah. And David was the youngest, of the, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. This thing had been going on for over a month. He would come out in the morning and he'd say, you Israelite dog, send somebody out here now. I have been waiting and waiting to fight you bunch of punks. Now send somebody out that I can defeat. He's got a lot of hot wind. He's got a lot of things that he thinks he can handle. Verse 17 says, And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for your brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Go see. I've heard things are not good over there. Go see how your brothers are standing up to this intimidation. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage at the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, here he came again today, the champion, the Philistine of Gath. Goliath was his name out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard him. He came out and gave his same spiel again day after day, month after month. He stood there intimidating the army that was across the way. Yeah, he is big. Yeah, he could probably throw a spear farther than anybody. But David heard him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be the man who killeth him. The king is going to enrich him with great riches and give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to that man? that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Taketh away the reproach. We, as Christians, have a cloak hmm, of reproach on us. What? How can you say that? We are not standing up to what the enemy is throwing at us. We are standing here, hidden, listening to what the enemy is spewing out in our ears, and we are hiding like Israel, sore afraid. What 
is going to happen next? Why is this happening to me? I am so afraid of what might come tomorrow. Reproach. An attitude that is not giving God glory. An attitude that is full of fear and not of what the power and the awesomeness God has for us. That, my friend, is a reproach. <laughs> These goofy things, you... They're, they'll spin faster than you can turn your head. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy, defy the armies of the living God? That is David's statement to his brothers to the army of Israel, to the question, to the reproach that is looming before them all. Who is this clown? And why are you guys afraid of him? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And, Eli and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left thy, those few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. There is going to be people from your own camp mm, that is going to say, what are you doing here? Why are you preaching that we can be overcomers. Why are you preaching that there is provision in the word of God? Why do you think that you can be healed from cancer? What is, what are you thinking at this present time? How can you get that in your mind that you, you are no different. We are both believers. We are both Christians. We are in the same family. Why do you think you can be an overcomer in this situation? When I have been here, I've been here the whole time listening to that giant, that Philistine, the enemy that is standing before us, hollering, and hurling insults and telling us that our God is not who he says he is. We, as a church body, not just here, but worldwide, need to know that we have been listening to the enemy far too long. We have been huddled in secret places far too long. We are hiding when the provision that was provided for us by God is being eaten by the Philistines. Why are we letting them buffalo us into submission when we serve a superior God? Why are we holding back? Why are we listening to their loudness? Why are we listening to their intimidation?
Do we not believe? Or where are we going to go from here? And I lost my place again. We're clear down to 27. I don't even know if I have 27 here. And the people answered him. After this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. We, you can. The king has placed all these nice things to the person that will go over there. But we still have no takers. We still do not have anybody in the army of Israel that is willing that has enough gumption, that has enough knowledge of our God to believe that he will take care of them. Nobody. And every day the king puts some, something sweeter in the pot trying to get somebody to take the deal. And so Eliab, his brother, says, what is wrong with you? Sit down and be quiet. Listen to that giant. He is proclaiming what's going to happen to us. And he turned to him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again, the former. He said, why are you letting this giant, this is David, proclaim that he is greater than the God of Israel? Why are we doing this? And they said, well, if somebody goes and kills him, the king said he can have all this. They did not understand that this is not something just the king is going to bestow on them. They are still looking at the natural things. They are not seeing the big picture. They do not understand that God is going to protect them. And God is greater than your enemy. God has a plan, and it is for us to prosper and to be in health and to have a good life. It is not a plan for us to be huddled, hiding, and letting the Philistines eat our lunch. And the, when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for them. When there is a proclamation from the word of God by God's servant, there is going to be talk around. When David started talking and saying, what is this uncircumphilistine doing trying to beat us down when we serve the living God? And so that starts a buzz right there. Everybody else is hunkering down, hiding in the trenches, waiting to see who is going to be the one to go and get killed by the Philistine. And here comes this kid saying, what is wrong with you guys? The king heard 
and sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant, me, I, will go and fight with this Philistine. <laughs> A kid! The seasoned army of Israel standing shaken in their sandals. And a kid comes by and says, what's the matter here? I serve the living God and I will go up before this enemy. And Saul said to David, oh, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, I kept my father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after them and smote them and delivered out of his mouth that lamb. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. And I, will, I slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David, a kid out in the wilderness, taking care of his few sheep, as his brother called it, standing before the king of Israel, the guy that said, you can't do anything, you're just a kid. But David had been in the presence of, of God. He knew that when he had to prov provide protection for the sheep, for the, they weren't even people, they were sheep that he was entrusted with, that he could believe in his God to take him through that situation that would provide for that thing that came up. He knew hmm, his God enough to know that God would provide whatever it took to meet that need. We, as modern-day Christians, have learned to live without. We have learned that if we don't poke the bear, he won't bother us. We have heard that there's a devil out there, and he is seeking form for whom he might devour. Well, he's, if he's looking, if we hide, he won't be able to find us. We can just do our, go by our daily routine. God will provide for us. And everything will be hunky-dunky. We need to believe. We need to know our God so intimately that we know <coughs> beyond a shadow of a doubt whatever lion, tiger, bear, wolf, or varmint comes to steal that which is ours, God will take care of us in whatever we have to do to get that back from the enemy. We need 
And we can't just do it for half an hour on Sunday. That is not. If I just saw Cindy half an hour a week, <laughs> I could be happy? No. <laughs> we need to know our God so intimately that we can finish his sentences. We need to be into the word so that we know that word. We need to have constant communion with God. And I'll tell you, David had it. When they get long, the chapters get long. This is terrible. So Saul says, you can't do that. You are just a kid. And David said, no. Well, yeah, I'm a kid. But. I know somebody that is greater than me. Hmm? I don't know. I'm just up here having a good time. And David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivereth me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. One more time, I have enough faith in my God to know that today he will provide another victory. Not a defeat, a victory that God can be glorified for. And Saul said unto David, Hmm, well then why don't you go? And may the Lord be with you. <laughs> Saul was at the end of his rope. He had been waiting. He had been sweetening the pot every day. No takers. Until this punk kid comes along. Oh, well, he's just a kid. Well, he's the only solution we've got so far. He's the only one that's willing. He's the only one that knows his God enough to believe that God will take care of him. So Saul said, go ahead and go. But he said, here, take my armor. And he put on his helmet, Saul's helmet on David. It was of, made of brass. And also armed him with a coat of mail, just like he could be. Look like the enemy. And David girded up his sword upon the armor, and he essayed to go. And he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I can't go up there with this stuff. I have no idea how to use any of it. And David put off it all. We need not to look like the enemy we don't need the helmet, the chain mill, the sword. When we know our God, he will provide the things that we need. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. He took what he had right there. 
and he put him in his shepherd's bag, which he had. He knew it. He knew the inside of that shepherd's bag and what was there. Even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and a ruddy and of a fair countenance. There was not one thing that the enemy thought David had. He was not a seasoned fighter. He was not, did not have age on his side. He was just a punk kid with no armor, no helmet, no spear, no arrows, no sword even. He's a kid that stopped down in the brook and got five smooth stones. Hmm? No, little ones that fit in his shepherd's bag. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by the Philistines' gods. And the Philistine said unto David, Come unto me, and I'll give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come unto you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou has defiled. You come spouting all your big words, able to curse me with your gods, but I'll tell you what, I'm coming before you with the true God. I'm coming against you because of the living God. I come before you to defeat you in everything that you are standing for. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite you and take your head from you. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not the sword and the spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine rose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and he ran. Guess what? He didn't run away. When he saw how big the enemy was, he didn't run away. He ran to meet that challenge. He ran toward the army to meet that big, ugly Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone. And he put it in that sling. And he smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead. And he fell upon his face to the earth. That Philistine that had not three minutes ago cursing God and telling David that he was going to feed his flesh to the fowl of the air and the beast of the field. He wasn't even going to get a burial. He was just going to be another trophy 
that Goliath could put on his belt. Another scalp, another Israelite that he had defeated again. But David believed in his God and would not cower, would not hide, would not huddle with the rest of them. David knew his God and decided that this problem, this huge thing that nobody else would tackle, that nobody else wanted to even get close to, that everybody else was hiding from. David knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that his God, David's God, the one that he knew intimately, the one that he had spoken to this morning, the one that he's listening to and saying, God, are you sure? Do you know how big that guy is? God says, yeah, I know. But I know you, David, you have a heart after mine. You, David, will prevail in this situation. Go before this enemy and slay him to prove that I, once again, am God. Not only to the Philistines, but to the army, my army, the army of the Israelites that have lost the fire, that have lost the communication, that have lost the intimacy that I so longingly need with you. The church today has become sadly a club a place we can go and be with our friends. Where is the power of God? There's plenty of enemies out there saying, what is the problem with you, church? You cannot stand. You might as well shut your doors. Come out here so we can kill you. Do not listen to the enemy. Listen to the Spirit of God. And he will make a way. Your friends, your family, whoever it is that are, does not have a intimate relationship with God is not going to understand what you are about to do. They are going to tell you, sit down and shut up, David. Don't you see the, the enemy is going to make us their slaves. Too late. You're already their slaves. Too late. You are huddling in a corner so that you cannot have to deal with the situation that is at hand. David knew that as long as that enemy stood on that other hill and was hollering and proclaiming and spewing garbage at them, this people would not be the people that God wanted them to be. Today, it's the same thing. Today, we have groups all over the country that say, why don't you come here? We, we can 
put a lawsuit against you. We can beat you. We can destroy you. We can make you our slaves. We need to stand up. We need to know beyond a shadow of doubt that whatever comes into our life, that we have a God that we serve. We have a God that we know. We have a God that we speak to constantly that is willing and more than able to bring us through. A God that can overpower natural things. Do you know that gas in a small area will blow up? Gas that is compressed into a building like this, that is strong enough to smell, that is strong enough to make a beeper go crazy? and does not blow up, there's something going on here. We serve a God that can take those natural things that are made to destroy us and we can become out the victor. The glory of God can change your situation. He can take those things that are meant to destroy you and make you stronger. He can take those things that are made to blow you up and make a testimony out of those things. I don't care what your situation is today. God can change your situation. God can take those things that are beating you down. God can take the things that are hollering in your ear. And he can say, enough. And you can defeat that enemy. That mountain. We sang about it today. Say to that mountain, move. That doesn't mean get our shovels out and start shoveling. That means know your God enough that you can believe if you say to that mountain, get out of my way. I'm not going to have to climb over you. I'm not going to have to go around you. I can go through you because of my God. We have in the pages of this Word of God instance after instance after instance of things that God has done for His people that has changed their situations. We can look at Shama. Over in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles, the Philistines again were coming and year after year they'd plant their field, their lentils, their beans. And by the just about, they were just about ready to harvest and in it sweep the Philistines. And Shama got tired one year of letting those Philistines take. The Philistines didn't show up to plant it. The Philistines didn't show up to weed it. But the Philistines would show up and take the spoils, would take the harvest, would take those things that they had put their life into, their sweat, their work. They had worked in these fields. 
and the Philistines would come and take them every time. Shama said, enough is enough. I'm going to stand in this field and no Philistine is going to take my beans. And he slew the Philistines that came to take his harvest. We today need to stand up and take back the harvest that the enemy has been stealing from us. We have put in hours and hours planting, weeding, watering, praying, and the enemy comes and takes our harvest. Enough is enough. Like Shama said, we need our harvest to survive. Why are we letting the enemy take our harvest? Why are we sit? We're hiding and letting them come in to our fields and take what is ours. Yeah. Boy, does that ring true today? Yeah. Do not let the enemy take your harvest. You stand in the middle of your field with your sword, with your wisdom of the word, and you start fighting. And the enemy will be defeated. The enemy cannot stand against the word of God. The enemy has not even a toehold. The enemy will fall with that smooth stone from the word of God. And your harvest will be saved. Your harvest will be gathered by you. Your harvest will be secure because you use the word of God and don't hide in the corner. That you don't hide down in the well because here they come. Here comes the enemy. I know they're big and they're, they've got swords and they're, gonna, they're not going to take my harvest. We're going to stand up strong. We're going to stand tall. Do you know that Shama was the only one standing in that field. It didn't, his brethren were all hiding. His family was hiding. But Shama got a revelation in his spirit and bypassed what his head was telling him. You can't stand against those Philistines. There's a whole bunch of them. And they're about ready to come over the hill. I know it. I can hear them. Shama stood and knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God would provide victory for him. David was the same. He threw that stone and hit that Philistine right in the middle of the head. And it, it says that it sunk into his forehead. Ha! And the devil, the enemy, Goliath, fell to his death. David didn't just stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. David went over and he grabbed that huge sword of Goliath's. The thing that had been tormenting Israelites, that weapon that was supposed to be used against David, David took that thing and cut off the head of that giant. Oh, ooh, why would he do that? Ooh. 
because it was evidence of a victory that God had orchestrated for David to have. And <laughs> do not hide. When the enemy rises up and gets his loudest, he, now is a time to attack him. Don't run away from him. Run at him with all that you have. Well, he didn't have nothing. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have... No, but he had what God had for him to use. The word and a rock. You might think that that enemy that's taunting you today, whether it's that C word that everybody cowers from or it's a lack of funds run at that thing with all that you've got the word of God and your knowledge and intimacy of God knowing that God will provide knowing that God will take care of you knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will be glorified in this situation. Let's not continue like we have been. Let's make a decision to know that God will provide. Well, what if we, what, what if we don't know? If you don't know down in here that God will provide for you, then you get into that word. You start speaking to the Lord and say, God, show me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Let me know your plans for, more, for my life that I can stand in total and utter believability that you have my best interest at your heart and he will he will show things to you that are personal it doesn't have to be what Saul had seen it wasn't what the brothers had seen but it mattered what David saw and happened to him. It was David's experience with the lion and the bear. It was David's experience that taught him that God would provide, that God would take care of him no matter what the situation was. And that God would preserve the harvest for him. We, as God's people, need to stop hiding. We need to stop cowering. We need to confront those things that are keeping us bound. We need to proceed with the word of God and know that God has victory over those things that we might have been hiding from for years. We might have been hiding from that problem for years. But God today wants you to confront those things and see victory in your life. Victory is yours. Victory is attainable. 
Victory is assured as long as you believe what God says in his word and proceed, not with caution, but unabandoned running towards that enemy and know that it will be conquered, not next week, not in the future generations, but today. God will give you that in your hand. Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you glory. Lord, we stand like David. We stand like Shama. And we say, devil, you're not going to take our harvest any longer. We will confront them with the truth of the word of God. And it will be our victory from today on. Lord, may we today be moved enough to confront those things that have made us hide in the past, that we will believe you enough to know that we can have victory over those things. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In your precious name we pray.